Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I have six all new beach DIYs for you, all using supplies from the Dollar Tree. Perfect for beach or coastal decor, or if you just decorate beach for summer. So the first one I want to make is a little beach gnome. I found this great little pencil case that's a mermaid tail from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna use that with one of those little metal round signs from the Dollar Tree some cardboard from a pizza box, a wood bead for the nose. I get those on Amazon, but you don't have to use a bead that big, but I like my nose for my gnomes to be a little bit larger. And some Dollar Tree macrame cord. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint our little gnome nose. I kind of want it to be flesh color, but I kind of want it to be pink too. So I had like this tan color that I went over the little wood bead with first. And then I followed that up with like a salmon color, kind of mixing the two colors together while it was wet to kind of give it like a little blushed um, little gnome nose for our gnome. Now I, I have a couple of these little mermaid pencil bags and I've always wanted to do something with them and I haven't been able to figure out what to do with them until now. It worked perfect for a beach gnome. Now it does have a zipper as you can see cause it is like a little pencil case. So I do want to remove that. That's kind of in my way. So it was easy to kind of remove it from the back. The front was a little bit more difficult though cause I didn't really want to cut through the uh, mermaid scale pattern, you know, the little sequence. And so I'm just going to cut off the zipper. And then how I ended up doing it was just kind of pulling it a little bit and cutting the strings that where it was sewed on. So I don't really have to cut through any of the sequins. And that what's inside is a little white like cotton bag, which you could leave in there if you want. I decided what was the purpose of it really to be in there. So I just took it out. And that looks pretty good. It's got like a plush back and a sequence front. But I'm going to use that bag that I removed for a template for my pizza box. <laughs> I was trying to find some cardboard because I want something stiff to go in the mermaid tail to make it stand up. Otherwise, it's going to be kind of floppy. So I cut out the cardboard about the same size as the little bag that went inside of it to make it rigid. And we're just going to put it right in there. Now I kind of want it to be attached um, so it doesn't, so it'll be easier to put, to put together. So I do a little bead of hot glue on the cardboard and kind of fold my sequins over, kind of sandwiching that in. My sequins part was a little bit longer because I didn't remove any of that part of the little mermaid tail. It's so pretty, I love the colors on this. And then I thought this little sign from the Dollar Tree, they have these available in white or black. It doesn't matter which one you get because you're not really going to be able to see it. We're just going to use it for the structure and for the base. So that's going to be our gnome. And we're going to build off of that. Most of the gnome that you're going to be able to see is the um, beard anyway, right? So this is macrame cord that I got at Dollar Tree. If you can't find this, you could always use Dollar Tree mop heads. Um, there's lots of other options. There's like the fluffy mop head, or you can get, you know, like a traditional mop head. You can use lots of different kinds of white strings if you wanted to have yours to have a white beard, like I do. So I'm gonna kind of start here on the bottom. And I wanna do like a first layer of the beard. I want the beard to be nice and thick, so I'm gonna end up doing a couple of layers here. And I'm just kind of cutting the cord down like one at a time and just hot gluing that to my sign, kind of like working my way up the circle there until I kind of get over to the side where it's gonna be wide enough for like the hat to come down over it. And one of my crafty beach bum viewers was telling me that these are called gonks, if you can't see their eyes. So that's just a random little gnome fact. But I love making gnomes, and I thought this would be a really fun little beach project today. We have a lot of variety, though. We have lots of different things that we're making today. I can't wait for you to see. 
Now, once I got my first row on there, I wanted to comb it out. Now, normally I can comb this stuff out, but I was having problems with this one. And it's like three strings wound together for the macrame cord. I found that it was easier just to actually just unwind them. So I'm gonna skip that part, kind of get to the end um, so that you can see what it looks like with the first row all unwound. And you, as you can see, it's a good start to a beard, but it's not quite um, thick enough. But I'm gonna go ahead and trim it while I can get to this part of the beard, kind of making it a little bit shorter on the sides. And I don't really want it to be longer than my sign itself, so I need to trim the bottom part of it too. Just trying to even that up a little bit. And then I think like the little gnome nose will go there. I'm gonna attach the wood bead there with like the hole in the wood bead going straight up and down so that you won't be able to see it. The hole in the top will be covered by the hat and the hole in the bottom will be pointed down. So it's just a matter of making a second row now for our little gnome beard. So I kind of figured out what size I needed and just kind of cut them in bulk to make this a little bit faster. And then just starting on the side of his nose, we're just gonna start gluing these on here until we get over to this side. This little, little beach gnome was so easy to put together. And I was really kind of wondering, you know, what to use for a body. And then I kind of thought about this sign and realized, you know, it doesn't really need a body because you're really not gonna be able to see it in the final project. But I love these little metal signs from the Dollar Tree. I'm always trying to find ways to craft with them. So just like before, um, the best way to make this look fluffy is to unwind it. So I just went all the way across and unwound all of the macrame cord, leaving a big, a fluffy little gnome beard. So that's what it looks like at this point. I do need to trim it up, kind of like we did before. Trying to shape it into a cute little beard by trimming it so cute already. And it's not even put together yet. So his little hat's gonna go on like that. It is the perfect size for the side. It slides right over and it's not, it doesn't fall over anymore since we put the cardboard from the pizza box inside. So I'm just gonna flip it over and add some hot glue and glue the back of the little mermaid tail pencil case to the back of the sign. And it's gonna be kind of a flat gnome, but it's still super cute. And then I'm gonna put hot glue underneath the sequence and kind of pull it down a little bit where its eyes would be. Kind of like that. I like the little fin at the end of the tail because it kind of like goes over to the side, which makes it look really cute when you display it. Now I wanted to decorate the hat a little bit more and I love this mesh white ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Actually, is this the white one? Yeah, this is the white one. Um, but it's a little too thick for this, so I'm just gonna cut mine in half to make a thinner ribbon. I think it looks a little bit like fishnet and I like to use it for fishnet a lot. So I thought we would just wrap fishnet all around the mermaid um, tail and we could do a little bit of coastal decor there. At first I was going to put one of those little mermaid um, chipboard pieces on there, but I ended up deciding to decorate the fishnet with shells instead. So we're just gonna secure that to the back. I just thought shells would make it look really super beachy and fun. And so using some of the little tiny shells from the Dollar Tree, these are the ones that come in the little glass bottles. I'm just going to decorate the um, fishnet ribbon with a couple different kinds of shells. I think that um, the starfishes from Amazon, I buy those little tiny um, starfish on there. Those are available in my Amazon shop below. And then I think that little like snail shell is like just from my personal stash, but all the other ones there are from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna do two on top, two on bottom. I just kind of wanted them to all be a little bit unique. It makes some fun decor. And just hot glue those to the sequins on the hat. Then to finish it off, I have two of these little coral pieces from the fairy garden section. 
at Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue one little piece of coral to each side just to decorate the base. That will be kind of in front of our gnome and the beard will kind of hang down and fill up all of the space there where the gnome would be. And I think it looks really cute. That's kind of how it looks like with all of the macrame cord just untangled. I thought maybe we could make it look even a little bit fluffier if we were to comb it. Uh, before I tried to comb it, you know, and I couldn't really comb it to unwind it like I wanted to. But at this point, I can get a comb through it. So that's what I decided to do is just comb it out, make it nice and fluffy. That also helps you to see if you have any like loose fibers or if anything then needs to be trimmed up a little bit. And so we're going to give him a final trim. And I think he looks pretty good. What do you guys think about this little beach gnome? I think he turned out so precious. And I'm so glad I put him together. I can't wait to display him in my home. And let me show you what he looks like. See um, the little tail kind of, you can kind of like push it off to the side a little bit, kind of tilt it, give it a little character. And our little mermaid tail gnome hat with a little beard and some coral in front. I think he's so sweet. I love him. I hope you do too. Okay, next DIY. I got this castle like wood cutout, I guess, at Dollar Tree in the Crafter Square. And I wanted to make a fun like sand castle DIY. So I thought we could use this to make a really cute like sand castle sign. But of course, I don't want to paint it. I want to actually cover it with sand, right? <laughs> so I'm using school glue and I'm doing a nice thick coat all over the front of our castle. Now, if you don't want to get super messy with sand, you could always paint this to look like sand, but you know, I'm extra. So of course I wanted my sand castle to be made out of sand. So I'm using Dollar Tree tan sand and I'm going to sprinkle a nice thick coat of sand all over my school glue. Whenever I do sand projects, I always like to use school glue for the first coat and then put some sand. And then I like to use some of this like um, spray glue from the Dollar Tree um, and just kind of spray that over to kind of glue all of the sand down. And at that point, I can put a little bit more sand on there. Now, this was really wet and I was didn't want to mess up my sandcastle at all. And I was kind of done crafting for the night. So I just put this aside for the whole night while I was sleeping to let this get good and dry. That way, all of my sand will stay secure on there and it won't get any damage because this is going to be like on a hanging sign. But one thing I can do first is uh, go ahead and get started on the sign part. So... Um, I'm going to use one of these little chalkboards from the Dollar Tree. You guys know I love those. They're great for crafting. They're nice and large, thick, and they don't bow. And I'm going to cover the chalkboard part with just some cheap contact paper from Dollar Tree, just so I have a little bit more of a finished back um, because I want to work on the back of the chalkboard because then I won't have to worry about covering up all of that white paint and writing on there. Once I get it on there, I can use a sanding block from the Dollar Tree and just sand around all four sides. You're gonna get a perfect cut of that contact paper and cover the back of your project, which is always nice to have a finished back, right? The only thing I don't like about these little chalkboard signs is the super sticky tag. So I'm gonna use a combination of heat, um, one of my little craft scrapers, and then it's still gonna leave a glue residue on there. Um, but it's worth it. It's a really good sign. So I'm going to use a little Goo Gone from Dollar Tree, kind of scrape off that. And then I'll have to give it, you know, a little bit of a cleaning to try to get all of that oil residue off there from the Goo Gone. And I'm going to go ahead and use my Cricut Weeder to poke some holes there in the back of the contact paper. Because this is still going to be a vertical sign. We're going to be able to use those to hang this up. And just doing one more uh, cleaning there to try to give myself a blank canvas here to decorate. 
Now I wanted to do a background for our sign and this is the background for the sandcastle. This color is Caribbean blue is what I chose. What I want is just a very abstract like ocean scene like just the ocean in the sky. I thought that'd be a nice contrast from the blue um, and with the sand on the front. Now covering the black can be a little bit challenging. You might wanna do white first because otherwise it's gonna take several layers. And as you can see, I'm using just acrylic paint, but it definitely takes lots of layers. So that's what it looked after in one. And then this is the second coat coverage. And then I'm just drying with my heat gun in between each coat to help speed this up. And then I decided to do my third coat horizontally because I'm going to kind of want that kind of feel anyway if I'm doing an ocean scene and to try to get a little bit better coverage too. So that's what it looks like with three coats. Now I can start going in. This is a turquoise color and I'm just using a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and kind of distressing a very, very subtle like ocean on there. Kind of mixing the two colors together. And I kind of go back and forth between the colors until I have good coverage and, you know, just a little bit of variation in color on the background for our sandcastle. And then I'm just going to use Dollar Tree twine, string that from the back and just knot that in the front just to make a new hanger for this um, sign. I'm also going to use my Cricut with this to add some words to the top to make a really cute sandcastle sign. And I do have that Cricut file for you if you want to recreate. Um, I will post that in the description below, but this is what I cut out of my matte white vinyl. I get this on Amazon as well. And I love it because it's matte, so it goes very good with coastal farmhouse or beach decor. And I just said, welcome to our castle. I thought that'd be really cute for a little sand castle sign. And I'm going to use my paper transfer paper. I get this on Amazon as well. I love it to transfer it onto that freshly painted sign. I did make sure that it was dry, but I just painted it and this works great because it doesn't cause any damage to the paint. So I made it perfect to size here for the top to fit right up here. And then we can put the little sand castle below it. So there's welcome to our castle. One thing I like to do with vinyl when you're adding it to a sign like that is to go back in with your original color, which mine was Caribbean blue, and lightly distress the vinyl to kind of make it look hand painted by working in one direction with a chunky brush. Now this is my sand castle after it dried all night long. So it's nice and solid. And then I'm gonna use lots of hot glue on the back to attach this to the front of the sign. Um, I was really impressed. I kind of like turned it over a trash can and I really only had a couple pieces of sand come off. It is really secure. And then just kind of press that on there, being careful not to try to damage my sand. I did kind of want to stamp like windows on there and stuff like that, but I thought it would probably cause more damage than cause decor. So <laughs> I'm just going to decorate the bottom of it. And I'm going to use a combination of those little tiny seashells from the Dollar Tree and the little starfish that I get on Amazon. And I'm going to kind of do a pattern, kind of repeat it here on each side, kind of a mirror image. And I thought that'd be a cute little final touch for this sign. Just a matter of hot gluing all of these little signs, um, little shells down. And I thought about putting, I had some little coral gnome um, from the fairy garden section that I was gonna put in the doorway, but I decided it was a little too much and I kind of liked it exactly where it was. So we are gonna leave it at that. And it's a welcome to our castle sign. So cute, this is so cute. If you put this by your entryway or something like that, or really anywhere. And as you can see, that distressing on the vinyl really helps to give it that hand-painted sign look. And I love that our sand castle is really made out of sand. That is so quirky and fun. And a little row of seashells for the beach. And this is how it turned out, our little welcome to our castle. I hope you enjoyed this DIY, it was super fun to make. 
Now, the next DIY, I'm gonna use a candle holder that I got at Dollar Tree and one of these Dollar Tree Shore Living shells. You guys know I love to craft with those. I love to pick them up whenever I can find them. And I thought we could do a really fun tray with this. Um, because it's a flat tray, um, I could sit that on the candlestick to act as a riser. And there's lots of different things you can do with this DIY and I'll give you some ideas as we go along because I wanted to use it personally like different ways where I might have to make more of these. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm using ivory chalk paint and just painting the back. I'm using a brush so that I can get down in between all that great texture on the shell. I want to paint this to make it look kind of realistic. So. I want like a distressed ivory on the back of it, but on the inside of it, I still wanted to keep that beautiful iridescence. Now, my candlestick I'm using is the round one. I picked this one because I thought it kind of reminded me of the lines of the shell, right? And it was already white, but I'm gonna paint that one ivory as well kind of going over any of the surfaces that you're gonna be able to see. I want to paint the candlestick the same as the bottom of the shell so that when I put them together, they'll all kind of, um, kind of blend in together. So even though I'm using chalk paint, I still kind of had to use a second coat of ivory to make sure that I covered all of the plastic and I went in and did a second coat on the candlestick as well, just to make sure that I had really good coverage. Now, one of the ideas that I had for this is that you could use this for a candy dish because the inside of it, we're not painting at all. It's still gonna be a plastic dish and it's just the right size for that. Um, my second idea is to use it as a little shelf next to my sink to hold my sponge and my scrubber. And I might end up doing that with it because it would be great for my kitchen. But as you can see, I'm just distressing with Antique Wax by Waverly, which brought out that beautiful texture. And I'm just using chunky brushes from the Dollar Tree. I went back with ivory afterwards because I can't really wipe it with a baby wipe because it'll wipe the paint off the plastic. And I want everything to stay stuck, but I don't want it super distressed, which is why I go back and distress with ivory after the Antique Wax by Waverly. Now I gave you a couple ideas what we're gonna use them for, but I'm actually gonna show you how to make it into a candle. So that is my third idea. Third idea. That's why I need more than one of these. But for the candlestick, I just distress it with Antique Wax by Waverly too. This one is made out of ceramic, so then I can just follow that up with a baby wipe and wipe off any excess, just giving me a nice distress that's gonna kind of blend into the bottom of the shell. I've done this little shell tray before when I made my solar light um, DIY and I really love leaving the inside of the shell this like just plain like that because look at the beautiful iridescence when you have the white background, right? It looks like the inside of a shell. So um, I think that's really pretty like that. I do want to kind of just paint the rim of it just to kind of make it look a little bit more finished here, just on the edge. And we're not gonna do anything to that beautiful iridescent part. That's why I was saying, you know, you could still use that for a candy dish, no problem. And I think it would be great for sponges and stuff like that as well, because it's totally gonna be waterproof. But if I were to make one next to my sink, I would probably seal the whole project in the end to kind of make it all kind of waterproof, if you know what I mean. So that is how it sits on my candlestick. It's just a matter of attaching it. I'm gonna use some of this multi-purpose cement from Dollar Tree. It's kind of like an E6000 and go around the rim of my candlestick. That's where you're gonna get most contact and that's gonna be more durable. And then I do do um, some hot glue in the middle, something to catch it initially um, and kind of push that down in that and let that sit until it starts to set up. And hopefully that will be durable. I didn't have any E6000, but I've had good luck with that multi-purpose cement from Dollar Tree before. So I let it dry and this is how it turned out our little shell tray. It's so cute and it was so easy to make. 
Now, I told you I was going to um, show you how to do it in this as like a candle. So I'm going to fill just the bottom part of it. I don't want to fill all of it. I just kind of want to fill the bottom part of it with sand. So I'll have a nice like level surface to work with and we can put the candles down inside. And I'm just using the little battery operated tea light candles from Dollar Tree. Three of them I thought would be perfect. It's going to give me a nice level surface to put those in. And a little bit more sand to kind of fill up around their sides a little bit. I don't think you could probably use a real candle in this because I think, you know, with the plastic, the shell is made out of plastic, it might not survive the hot wax. So I thought some of these little Dollar Tree pearls would be really cute inside since it's got that beautiful iridescent inside to the shell. And then I thought I would use like some of those little tiny shells from the Dollar Tree kind of a variety of them and just kind of make a little beach scene here inside my candle holder and maybe a little starfish as well. I was trying to pick out like a variety of shells to kind of decorate it all around. My son happened to be walking by and I'm like, what else does this need? Does this need anything? And you'll see him here in a minute. He's going to come in and tell me what to do. <laughs> the boss has spoken. I'm going to do a little bit more sand here and um, another shell. And I was thinking about like doing maybe another pearl right in the middle. And my son right there says no, but it needs a starfish right here. So I do what I'm told. <laughs> and I appreciate the advice. So I'm going to maybe one more shell over there, and I think that looks super cute. I'm not sure if I will keep this as a candle holder. It's probably going to end up in my kitchen, so I might need to seal the outside of it, unless I go ahead and make some more of these. But I love the iridescence of the inside of that shell dish, and I think it looks really cute up on a pedestal like that using the little candlestick from the Dollar Tree. But this is how mine looks all lit up. I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about my little shell tray? DIY. And I hope you were able to pick up some of those shells. Hey guys, I want to take a quick moment and let you know how you can connect with me. I have a private Facebook group and I always have it linked below. I also have Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest. And my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. Now back to the beach DIYs. This next one, I found these great little paddles from the Target dollar spot. They were $5, but right now they're on clearance for half off. So if you're lucky, you can pick these up for $2.50. Now they're not really my jam with like the navy and white because I don't really have nautical decor in my house. I have more beach decor, but I thought we could use the back of them, which I were hoping was white and they are. And some of these little beachy canvases from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could make them look like they were like hand-painted oars. Like one has a mermaid tail and one has seashells but the colors are kind of similar on these two and they're both large enough to cover the end of the oar and so that's what we're gonna do for this. It's gonna be so easy and it turned out so cute. Because I knew I wanted to display these. They're not really very big paddles, but they're definitely big enough for decor. So I'm just using a razor blade on all four sides of my little canvas here from the Dollar Tree. And these are not like shore living. These are just like some canvases that I found like in, um, you know, the regular home decor aisle. They really have some great canvases. Um, I pick up these all the time because I love to DIY with them. So I have it free. I always save my hanger from the back. And I thought it would be really cute to do the little mermaid tail here on one of the paddles. It's almost um, the right size where none of it will be cut off. Maybe a little bit of the tail. So I just flip over my little paddle and use an ink pen to draw the shape of the little paddle on the back of my canvas. And now I can just simply cut that down with a pair of scissors. And we're just going to cover that. The canvas is really good to work with because it's nice and thick, it's easy to cut, and it's still kind of a fabric material so you can glue it down pretty easily with Mod Podge. So that is my mermaid tail. Now for the top part, I'm gonna do this little seashell pattern. 
it kind of has like some rays like sequence on it, but it's not really glittery or anything like that. So I kind of think it's okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and save my little hanger on the back. And it's kind of cool, isn't it? It's got like a sand dollar, a seashell and a starfish on it. And I'm going to do the same thing, just cutting around the sides with a knife. The only tricky part of freeing these canvases are the corners because it's kind of folded there. So I'm just going to kind of try to get in there with a pair of scissors and kind of cut that, free it from the frame. I don't really save the frames themselves. They're not made out of really very good wood. If they were, I would, but they're kind of made out of that cardboard wood. And I'm not going to be able to get the whole image on there, but I thought I could get like maybe a little bit of all three. And so I just flip it over like I did before and use a pen to draw that shape on the back. And you know, Dollar Tree doesn't have a very good selection of like scrapbook paper and stuff like that. And they're basically the only store that I shop at for craft supplies. Michael's is too expensive and we don't have a Hobby Lobby. So um, we make do with what we can find at Dollar Tree, right? So I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach these. I do do like a rather heavy coat because it is a, you know, kind of a heavy canvas that we're going to be attaching. And I'm just going to put the Mod Podge on the bottom. I really don't need to do anything to the top. Um, and it will dry just fine. So there's our little mermaid tail. I'm going to have that be the bottom of my display. And then this one's going to be my top. I'm going to have kind of display them one going up, one going down. So I do Mod Podge on this one. The star is going to be the top of it. And just kind of glue that in place. You do have to let that sit for a minute so that it can start to glue before you try to trim it or anything like that, but mine were pretty close to the perfect size. Now I just had to figure out how I was gonna put these together. So I decided to use some Dollar Tree craft wood. At first I was thinking about making like a whole shape like that with like, you know, one piece going got diagonally. Then I decided I kind of wanted a little bit simpler frame for this. And so I just kind of need a piece of craft wood to connect each paddle to each other. And so that's what we're going to do. I only end up needing one piece of craft wood. And I kind of measure, um, I want it to be shorter so it doesn't stick out the sides. And I can cut that one piece down into two little pieces with my saw. And um, then I can connect them together. It's going to make it a nice strong project that I can then um, attach a hanger to to hang it to my wall. I love the little twine that's already on there. And so I kind of want to connect them underneath that so it doesn't interfere with the twine that's wrapped around the handles. Now I was trying to decide if I wanted to leave it like raw wood like that. And I decided I kind of wanted to make it look a little bit beachier. So I'm going to show you how to distress this craft wood from the Dollar Tree to make it look like driftwood. So we're going to start with some ivory acrylic. Add some antique wax by Waverly and it's going to give you the perfect base coat for driftwood. So I'm just going to go over the top of both of our little pieces of wood that we cut down. And my original plan was to try to make kind of like a fencing behind it, like a beach fence, but I just didn't know how I could pull it off. So I'm also going to do the sides just in case that you can see them kind of make a little bit cleaner. And that is going to be my base coat. So once I get that on, I give that a quick dry. And then to finish off that driftwood look, I just go in with Antique Wax by Waverly and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and just distress it in one direction, giving it that like wood grain back in there. And it kind of gives it that driftwood feel. So now we can go ahead and put this together. I used a ruler to kind of line this up to make sure that it was flat and straight. And then we can attach it like this with the driftwood painted part pointing towards the front of the sign. And I'm just going to attach mine with hot glue. They're not real heavy, so I think this will work. But if you wanted to, you could always use wood glue as well. And just glue that down, kind of pushing down until that starts to set up. 
and it actually turned out really sturdy. I was impressed with it. I think probably because the, the wood um, for the paddles is actually really thick too, and so is this craft wood from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to glue the bottom on the same way. Now, the only thing I have left to do is a way to hang this. I want to hang it like vertically. So I'm going to take some Dollar Tree twine, just tie a knot in one end. And I decided to double knot it because it was kind of thin. And then kind of make a short hanger by making a double knot here on the other side about how big I want it. And then I can just use my staple gun to attach this since I have that nice thick wood. And I'm trying to make it where it will hang straight. So that is going to be that part of the handle. So on this side, I want it lined up with the handle on that side. And so that it will hang evenly. And I think it turned out really pretty. So we used a combination of two Dollar Tree canvases. And these cute little paddles or oars from the Target Dollar Spot that they have on sale right now for $2.50 for both of them. And didn't that turn out cute? I was trying to decide what to do with these because I knew I didn't want that navy and white in my decor. And I think that these turned out so beachy and fun. And you could put these anywhere. I think I might put these in a bathroom. Okay, next DIY, I got one of these photo hangers from the Dollar Tree, and I thought it'd be really fun to kind of make a beach mobile with these little beach creatures that they had from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. These are the little ornaments. And so I thought we could just do like sea creatures. So I'm gonna do like two sea turtles and two seahorses. Those are my favorites, the sea turtles and the seahorses, and a starfish. I thought five would probably be full enough, even though this photo hanger from the Dollar Tree has seven cords hanging on it. And some of mine were a little bit discolored anyway, so I'm just gonna get rid of the ones that are a little bit discolored and um, just have five. I can always shorten that one in the middle it also comes with these really cute little clothespins that I'll have to save for another project because they're nice and tiny and colorful. Now, I wanted to do all these sea creatures, but I wanted to do them in like a ombre blue, like each one a slightly different color of blue. So to start with the seahorses, we are using, this is the cloudless color from Apple Barrel from Walmart. And I'm just using a makeup sponge and doing a coat of that light blue. For the sea turtles, we're doing a Caribbean blue color. As you can see, it's a little bit bluer on both of those. And we're not gonna leave them all plain like this. We're gonna add some details to this too to make this extra special. And then for the starfish, I chose this color, which was lake. And I ended up thinking that was a, a little bit too dark of a blue, so I do end up lightening that one a little bit, but the cloudless definitely needed a second coat. The Caribbean blue, not so much, but I decided to mix turquoise with that color, and I thought that gave me more of the ombre effect where the starfish is the darkest, and then the lightest are on the ends, which are these little seahorses. Now I'm using my fine-tipped um, Sherbonder hot glue gun, and I'm just drawing a very simple seahorse skeleton on there by doing two lines down, doing the fins, and then doing lines straight across. One little dot for an eyeball, and then they have that little like fin where you would think like an ear would be. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Two lines down, then do lines across horizontally, fill in the fin, on its back with some little lines, an eye, and then a little fin here on the side. Doesn't have to be perfect. That's about as much detail I could, as I could fit on something this small. And then I use my heat gun to get rid of all of the strings of hot glue that you're inevitably to get, but you want to get rid of now. Now for the sea turtle, I just drew like the shape of the shell. And then I'm just going in and doing little circles, um, kind of alternating them together to make a little pattern on the back of our sea turtle to give him lots of texture. And just kind of anywhere there was an opening, I put a circle. So we're gonna do the same thing over here. Staggering three circles and just kind of working my way down, trying to keep it all to scale. 
And adding texture with a hot glue gun is a very simple way to take like a flat little ornament sign like this and just make it extra special. For the starfish, it already has a pattern on there of circles and I can see that through the paint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw all the circles back on. The last one you kind of fill all the way in, but that's okay and give it that great little starfish texture. Now, the reason I painted them first is because I'm gonna come in with a different color to kind of distress the um, hot glue that we put on there to kind of draw that out. And then I decided to add some eyes for our sea turtle as well, just by doing little tiny dots. Again, burning off any of the strings because when you distress it, you're gonna be able to see that. So I'm just using a makeup sponge from Dollar Tree and some ivory acrylic. And I'm just dragging that over all of my ornaments, slightly distressing them, but also bringing out the great texture that we added with the hot glue. And I really didn't let this sit very long. It set up pretty quickly, um, the hot glue itself. And if you get too much distressing on there, you can kind of wipe that away with a little baby wipe till you get your perfect style. And now it's time to put this little beach sea creature uh, mobile together. I think this is gonna make a great wall hanging. Now my rope in the middle is a little bit longer than it needs to be if we're going to scale with the other one. So I'm just gonna knot that shorter and we can just cut that down to size. Now you could always add like some larger seashells to this as well, that'd make a really cute wall hanging. But I wanted to try something with these little ornaments from the Shore Living Line at Dollar Tree. So I'm gonna cut off the excess rope at the each end of each one of them. I don't think I really want that part on there, but you could always comb that out if you wanted it. And now it's just a matter of putting this together. I did not cover any of the holes in the top of the ornaments and we'll use that to help attach it with these little strings that also come with the ornaments. Um, but that's kind of gonna be a minor thing that holds them on. I'm gonna kind of start them out with hot glue instead. At first I thought about tying them on, but it was gonna kind of make them tie on a little bit crooked. And so I decided to hot glue them right above the knot right at the bottom of the rope, make sure that my rope, both my ropes are laying flat and just hot glue my little starfish on. And then I take my twine and I go around from the back like this. And basically I want to push both strings in from the back. That will be nice and even. And then we can just knot this in the front just by pulling it tight and just tying it over itself and then just trimming off the excess twine. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that method to um, put together all of these. So I make sure both of my cords are flat, right? And then I'm gonna hot glue on my little sea turtle by just adding some hot glue to the rope itself and sit my little sea turtle down there. And I remember the rope goes behind the cord, string both strings through the hole in the top of your ornament, and then you can knot it off in the front and then trim that down. Super easy to put this together and it turned out so cute. It's definitely unique. I don't have anything like this in my home. And this would be cute for just about anywhere. It'd be really cute for a playroom or a kid's room as well. I think they'd really enjoy it too. And so our little seahorse over on the side, I did alternate my seahorses so that they're both pointing inward. Um, I didn't really need to do that with the sea turtle or the starfish because they're kind of the same. And I just did that to kind of finish off the edges, kind of make it look symmetrical, right? So we're gonna keep putting this together. And I'm really glad that I decided to do like the hot glue texture on these because I really think it made them stand out and make them a little bit less plain than if you were just to paint them. You could always get, if you're a really good painter, you could always paint um, them to look more realistic too, but I can't say that I am a famous artist or anything. <laughs> and so here is our final little ornament tying that off. And I think five is definitely enough to fill up this wall hanging. And basically that is all there is to it. They can all hang down like that. It's got the rope already attached to the top of it to hang it. And so it was just such a quick and easy DIY. And this is how it turned out. 
So if you see one of these little photo holders at your Dollar Tree, be sure to pick one up. I think they're really versatile. I think you could do a lot of different things with these. And this is just one idea. Okay, are you ready for another beach DIY? I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to remake this little seashell wreath form from the Dollar Tree. Now I noticed that these and the mermaid tails are really the only shore living items I'm finding right now at my store. Um, but maybe people don't like the shell one because it's this color of yellow, right? I don't want to cover it. I want to use the structure. So I'm going to use this spray paint. This beautiful blue color. I'm not really sure what the color was called. I'll find out and put that in the description below. I went outside and spray painted both sides. That way there was no like yellow kind of peeking um, out from behind. And then I want to cover it with one of these little kitchen towels from the Dollar Tree with that beautiful like blue and gray pattern um, that they had for Shore Living this year. And I just kind of wanted to show you how you could cover the back of it with a just a dish towel. Now you can use whatever kind of fabric you have. Um, I have made one of these with the burlap that they have from the Dollar Tree this year. So if you want to see that one, you'll have to check out that video as well. And it's just a matter of attaching this to the back because we're going to use that structure of the shell. Um, and I'm going to use my fine tip hot glue gun because I want a very thin bead. I don't want hot glue all over the place. And my Rio bead shoots out a lot of hot glue. So I do a thin layer along the bottom and line up the towel. I have the kitchen towel sideways and that makes it just long enough to cover the entire shell with one piece of fabric, which is what I was going for. Now, I can't really put hot glue on everything because it will set up before I get my fabric on there. So I'm only going to do the parts that I think are necessary. So I did the left side first, and then I'm going to do the right side. Then I decided not to do any of the middle pieces that kind of go straight up and down. I decided to do like all of like the little horizontal pieces that go through the shell. So once I got those sides, I decided to do that first like scallop pattern here. I can do that quickly before my hot glue sets up. And just line that and then flatten it out. I found that the hot glue doesn't even burn you through the towel because it's so thick. So that worked well. And you never know what you can do with these like really cute towels, like kitchen towels that you can get at Dollar Tree. You could also do this with the sea turtle pattern that they have out right now for summer. That would be really cute as well. But I wanted to kind of give you an idea of something else you could use to cover the back of these. Now, I'm going to do the same thing I did before. I'm just doing this horizontal section, going over the scallop shape and laying that on there before it sets up. And then we'll do the same thing for the top. It's going to be a little bit bigger scale. So I'm going to do one section at a time so that it doesn't set up between different sections. And Because I, I want the fabric to be tight on there as I can, um, but I also kind of have limitations from the hot glue. Now, once I have it all glued down, I just need to remove the excess fabric. And so it's glued down pretty good. And now it's just a matter of getting some sharp scissors and trying to get in as close to that wire reform as possible. I've noticed these like are really, a lot of my stores still have these. Um, and so I think a lot of people don't really know what to do with them. They're a little tricky to decorate the little shell wreath form, but I love them. I think they're super cute. So I was trying to get like, really close on these, but it was kind of taking me a while. So I decided to kind of switch it up and um, just get as good as I could get here and then go back and trim it closer if I needed to. Trying to make sure that I don't pull it away from the wire wreath form. I don't want it to come apart. But I think that looks pretty good and it's nice and colorful. I love this fabric. This is the same design that was on their placemats that I made like a little pillow DIY out of. And I use these placemats out in my Florida room too on my kitchen table out there. And I think it's really fun. Now you could um, leave it like that, but I kind of wanted to finish the edges. So I'm going to use some of this thick jute um, cord from Walmart. 
It's a little bit thicker than the one from Dollar Tree. The only thing I don't like about this twine from Walmart is it is really fuzzy and crazy. So I'm going to take my lighter and I mean, you can't really see it, but I'm just going to burn off all the fuzzies. Um, and so I'll have a nice cleaner rope to work with. Now I'm just going to do a bead of hot glue and I'm going to use that jute cord to kind of just finish it off. It's going to kind of seal the deal between the towel and the wire wreath form. And it's also going to frame it out and make it look nice. And it's thin enough that it's not really going to take away from the design too much. Usually with these wire wreath forms, I cover all of the wreath form with some kind of a rope. But for this one, I kind of like the details of just the wire that we painted blue. And I even thought about like doing a back to this and adding a little polyfill in between. If you were to do that, it's going to give you that like pillow effect where um, the fabric and the stuffing is going to come up between each section of the shell, which I think would be really cute. It would add like another dimension to it. And so that might be something you might want to try with these as well. But I am just going to kind of leave it flat like this and I end up decorating it a little bit more once I get it all framed out. Now, one thing you're going to want to try to remember to do is add a hanger to this. I didn't really want to mess with anything so far, so I don't have a hanger on it yet. And But I'm going to show you I do end up kind of adding a hanger um, after I kind of get this part put together. So just finishing that off. That really kind of cleaned things up and it made up for the part that I couldn't get real close with my scissors on that. Now here is the hanger. I'm just going to slide it in from the front and right here in the center. And I'm just going to tie a knot, make a very simple hanger. It's close enough to the top um, that it still hangs flat against the wall. And so I think that's going to work. Now I want to decorate the bottom and I thought maybe one of these sand dollars from Dollar Tree and a couple of seashells would be really cute. But I kind of want to make them coordinate with that print that we put on there. So we're going to make our shells and sand dollar blue. So I'm using like uh, the lake color of acrylic, I think, on my seashells. That's definitely a color that you see in that kitchen towel. And I'm going to do both of my seashells in that same color. And then for my sand dollar, I kind of wanted um, kind of more of a turquoisey teal color. So I kind of mixed several colors together until I get the shade in the towel that I was looking for. A little bit more turquoise and that looks good. And I love working with these little plastic sand dollars from Dollar Tree because they're so easy to paint or to DIY with. Um, they're not real. Um, they're just like made out of plastic molds. And then to bring out all that great texture, I just distress all over with some white acrylic. All three of my shells. And I don't want to make them too white. I still want them to be colorful. So I do go back in there and kind of distress again with the original like lake color to make them a little bit bluer. And then we're going to decorate the bottom part of this wreath form with these. Sand dollar in the middle. And I'm just going to glue that on with hot glue to the wire structure. And I'm also going to add Dollar Tree flowers to the bottom of this to kind of make it extra special. But I definitely wanted the sand dollar and the shells glued to the wire to kind of make it stronger. So once I get my sand dollar on there, it's just a matter of doing the same thing with my little blue seashells for each side. See what a good job I did of like kind of matching the colors in the sign. I think it definitely goes well together. And I'm going to glue one of those to each side. They're not quite the same size, but that's okay because we're going to fill in that whole bottom scallop area with Dollar Tree flowers. Now these are the flowers we're going to use. They're called camellias, and I thought they were a beautiful, like, beachy blue. They're kind of a very small flower. And I just thought it needed more decoration here at the bottom. So I'm just going to start by trimming the little plastic piece off. 
and then hot gluing these flowers down. And the good news about these flowers is that when you trim them, they don't fall apart. So that's always good. Otherwise, they kind of stick out a little bit more than I want them to. And I just kind of want to fill that whole bottom section in. I do do a bottom row, as you see there, but I ended up not wanting the bottom row. So I do end up removing that at the end, but they were there for a time being. <laughs> So I'm kind of just filling in all the different areas in between my shelves. I don't really want to cover up my shelves too much, right? But I do want to fill up the space with the flowers. And so I'm just going to start going in there and kind of filling this whole bottom section up. And we're going to speed this up to like rock and roll because there was a lot of flowers. I did use three. I think a total of three arrangements of that camellia flower to fill in this whole section. And they're not like super beachy, you know, the beach, it's not like really a beach flower, but the color definitely, I think, goes with the coastal decor. And then basically just wanted to cover up all of the towel in that area. And the towel works great back there too, because I'm using that to glue it too. That's when I decided I didn't really want um the flowers at the bottom and so i'm just going to use my heat gun to kind of get those off try to get them off without causing any damage and then i wanted to kind of tie it all up with a bow so i take some dollar tree twine a long piece i wrap it around the back of the shell and then i just wanted to tie like a simple little bow here to kind of make it look like it was all wrapped up i thought that would be a really fun final touch I wasn't super happy with my first attempt at a bow, but that's okay. We will just try again. And my second attempt turned out a little bit better. I just wanted a very simple bow just to make it look like it was tied up. And we've already got the hanger on there as well. So I think that this little reef DIY is complete. Um, just with a Dollar Tree towel and a few flowers and seashells and a sand dollar from Dollar Tree. Very blue. I love it. I think it turned out really cute. What do you guys think about my little wreath DIY? And this is how it looks. You can see that towel texture. Um, it's kind of cute though. I kind of like it. It's kind of unexpected, but the colors are beautiful. And I think it's a fun way to DIY this little shell wreath form. And this is how it turned out. And I wanted to take a quick moment and let you know that I've introduced memberships on my channel for $4.99 a month. You can support me here at Crafty Beach. You're going to get early ad-free access to my videos. Um, I try to do 12 to 24 hours early if I can make it and other perks as well, like shout outs. And I want to give a huge Crafty Beach thank you and shout out to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Mary Banks, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Stacy Hall, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, and Verna Noctegal. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. And now it's time for the final reveal. Don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed today's video. Comment your favorite DIY below and don't forget to subscribe. We're almost to 20,000 subscribers and I'm going to do a big 20K giveaway very soon. So here we go. Here's the final reveal. Enjoy. Vision that I saw is getting closer 
for watching if you'd like to watch more crafty beach youtube thinks you might enjoy this video right here <laughs>